In recent years, from the splendid headquarters of the American TFP in Spring Grove, Pennsylvania, and from the existing offices in several cities in the United States, the disciples of Plinio Correa de Oliveira have raised the standards of the counter-revolution throughout the country. In the past few years, the American TFP has been increasing its activities, launching new campaigns. It's a big country, and it's necessary to have large activities to balance out. In the March for Life held every January in Washington, D.C., TFP members always present themselves with a note of gallantry and certainty of victory, even when the winter is intense. It's always cold. Sometimes it's raining, sometimes it's snowing. And the TFP has been there with the band every year since the beginning in 1973. Usually there's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people there, many of them young, many strollers, uh, even people in the crowds cheering, saying, we are the pro-life generation. You would think the March for Life would cause a media storm, but year after year, the media prove themselves, and they're always silent. The TFP has been campaigning to warn against the role of a leading and famous promoter of the homosexual revolution in the church. Some people know Father Martin as a regular Jesuit priest. Others know him as the Rainbow Jesuit. Father Martin gives talks, lectures at parishes, uh, universities. The topic of his lectures are always LGBT acceptance and tying their movement into the Catholic Church. We've been having protests in front of these places where he gives talks, defending Catholic doctrine and led, letting him know that there are Catholics who actually stand up for what the church teaches regarding these matters. Faced with the threat posed by Islam in recent decades to the entire Christian civilization, in 2019 the American TFP published an important book by Luis Sergio Solimeo. Islam and the Suicide of the West, The Origins, Doctrines and Goals of Islam. The book had a symbolic launch on the island of Malta where, in the 16th century, the Knights of St. John, led by Lavalette, won a resounding victory against Muslim armies. Dissemination of the Return to Order book, which started in 2013, continues in full gear. Return to Order campaign has been selling books, spreading the book in audio format and in hard, hardback, soft cover. As of currently, there are over 350,000 of these Return to Orders in circulation. In addition to its English version, the book has also been published in other languages. And more recently, we've launched the Spanish version, Portuguese, and German versions of the book. The American TFP holds regional conferences for its friends and supporters throughout the year, and its national conference, the most expressive of these events, is held once a year. The biggest one's in October. That's the national conference. That's where we have over 200 uh, participants. TFP seats are gradually being established throughout the country. In addition to those already established in Pennsylvania, Washington, D.C., Lafayette, Louisiana, San Jose, California. New seats have been opened in New Orleans, Louisiana, Houston, Texas, and Claremont and Miami, Florida. The seats are excellent activity centers as well as springboards for the Fatima Statue Visitation Apostolate. We cannot fail to mention the seat on wheels, St. Raphael. It's been on the road for many years, but it's a house with running water, electricity, and gas, everything you need. There's a living room, kitchen, bedroom. It has traveled thousands of miles in the last four years, visiting many cities and states, and taking Our Lady of Fatima's pilgrim statue to American Catholic homes. The apostolate with young men is constantly growing and improving. And the cult chivalry camps are an important factor in this apostolate. These camps are for young men 13 to 18 years of age. We have them in Louisiana, Pennsylvania. We have a fall camp in Arkansas. What it does is it takes them out of the context of everyday life to teach them about the ideals of knighthood. Every year we have a theme of the camp. It can be on any country or time period. Medieval France, 
Spain, Portugal, Italy. Uh, indoor activities, outdoor activities. At the Call of Chivalry camps, many of the boys receive invitations to go to the St. Louis de Montfort Academy, an academy in Pennsylvania run by full-time volunteers of the American TFP. It's an all-boys Catholic boarding school with a regular curriculum. We have all the, all the basic subjects, history, math, science, uh, religion. The goal of the academy is to prepare young men to confront the world and its dangers in the modern times, to defend their Catholic faith, and to be good counter-revolutionaries. The academy is also expanding its borders. They recently acquired the neighboring property, adding a new house and more space for open-air activities to their existing facilities. For those who are university age and in the college level, we have student conferences uh, held by the TFP Student Action Campaign. Meetings have been held at the U.S. TFP's headquarters in Spring Grove, Pennsylvania and elsewhere. TFP Student Action holds frequent campaigns and demonstrations on the hottest topics of our time. The TFP Student Action Campaign over the years has developed its methods to fight evils on campus. This could be abortion, LGBT uh, ideology, could be homosexuality, socialism. We raise the TFP standard and unroll a banner that says, for example, God's marriage equals one man plus one woman. In addition to their face-to-face -face action at universities, the TFP youth have promoted numerous online protests to stop abortionist propaganda and gender ideology in academic environments, especially in Catholic institutions. Here's an example of their demonstration's effectiveness, the victorious campaign in defense of the cross. In 2019, the Bladensburg Cross was under attack by the American Humanist Association, which were suing to have it torn down because they said it was an offense to their beliefs. The cross is a World War I monument to fallen soldiers. What the American TFP did was collect signatures and hold a big campaign out in front. It was after this campaign that the Supreme Court ruled seven to two in favor of the cross. In 2021, two years later, the Satanists attacked the same monument, holding a satanic ceremony out in front. We held a campaign in its defense. As could be expected, TFP Student Action young men often face attacks and furious counter-protests in universities. One of the biggest clashes took place in September 2019 at George Washington University. We were there for about an hour, protesting, uh, campaigning like normal, handing out flyers. We had a little bit of pushback, but that was normal. But about an hour in, uh, they started playing music, someone, we don't know who, uh, from behind the main gates. We were in front. And what happened, they started to gather where the music was playing, and once the crowd gathered to a sufficient amount, they uh, exited out of the main gate and they tried, they tried to surround us. And that was where the battle lines were drawn. They were there screaming, yelling, super loud. It was the loudest thing I've ever heard. They were yelling profanities, a uh, crowd in unison with the music, jumping up and down. Things got heated enough to the point that the police had to be called in to divide the lines. There was a man that joined us in the middle of that. No, to, to give you an idea of how the spirit of the fight, it draws people in. And I remember looking to the side and seeing a random student who joined us in the middle of the fray. I remember looking to the side and I, I told him, well, welcome to the fight, and he said, thank you. One of the TFP's most insistent campaigns in recent years concerns the so-called drag queen story hours for children. The drag queen story times are 
men that dress up in women's clothing and read LGBT books to the little kids, toddlers. After the first event in Lafayette, Louisiana, the infamous wave began to spread to other locations. In Wisconsin, a statue of Our Lady that was at the rally was attacked by one of the pastors. She grabbed the statue, throwing it to the ground, and they called the police. In mid-2020, under the pretext of protesting the death of George Floyd, the Black Lives Matter movement began to wreak havoc across the country and to attack monuments of historical figures. These riots destroyed many buildings, burning uh, parts of towns, and causing general destruction. They went after St. Junipero Serra in California. They went after the statue of St. Louis in Missouri, King St. Louis. A TFP member joined dozens of Catholics who defended the statue of St. Louis against one of the anarchists' attacks. The TFP promoted an online petition and obtained 58,000 adherents in defense of the statue. The petition was presented to the city mayor. After the revolutionary storm subsided, the statue of St. Louis the King remained standing. The BLM movement also attacked the police and the American TFP members came to their defense. When they went after police for what they stood for, the American TFP couldn't stand on the sidelines. We started a St. Michael Protect the Police campaign. We had medals made, tens of thousands, to give out and for our supporters to give out. In defense of the police, we held two waves of rosier rallies across the country, 2,000, 3,000 rallies each time. And in, in addition to these rallies, we also had the honk campaigns at the intersections. Pro -police campaign. Whenever there was a police department next to the location of our campaign, we would go and thank them for their service. We'd give them St. Michael's medals, talk with them. They were always very happy to receive us. Round of applause for our police officers. One might think that the TFP would have been paralyzed during the coronavirus pandemic in 2020. Instead, when almost everyone was discouraged, TFP members decided to make a bold move. The, the Mother of Mercy Restore America campaign was composed of nine caravans. One of the ideas was to have a campaign at each capital praying the rosary for a return to order. We started in St. Augustine, Florida, which was the place of the first recorded mass in the United States. And from there spread to the rest of the country. There was a caravan in the southeast, three in the west, two in the northeast. One that went all the way to Alaska and to the most northern point of, that, of the state. The members that went there lined up along the coast facing Russia and gave the broad of tradition, family, property. We were very blessed to have the sacred image of Our Lady of Fatima on one of our caravans. To give us courage, to give us the grace In the past, she's been on campaigns here and there uh, but this was the first time she's ever been on caravan. This past summer, there were riots in Cuba against this communist dictatorship. And this, this opened the door to a, a, a large campaign in the United States. There's many Cuban Americans in Florida. There was a grace against communism that we could sense in the country. You know, we, had, we had caravans that went collecting petitions to send to the President of the United States to do away with communist Cuba. After weeks of campaign, collecting signatures physically and through QR codes, through advertisements, billboards, uh, the American TFP collected over 70,000 petitions. 
before delivering the petitions to the White House, which was scheduled for August 5th. Uh, we held a press conference in front of the Cuban Embassy. 